Okay, I think we're ready to get started. My name is Jane Collier. I'm a Clackamas County Master Gardener. Um, all of us Master Gardeners are trained by OSU, and we are trained to give you information that is um, research-based and uh, applicable to our area. This is supposed to be a 25-minute talk, and um, then we have questions afterwards, but our whole thing here today lasts until noon, so at noon we'll we can answer some questions for you and then everyone will start cleaning up everything. They've got some rose pruning coming into this building after we're finished today. Okay, we're going to talk about growing blueberries and from the hands that I saw earlier, I'm sure a lot of you either, probably most of you have some blueberries already or some of you are thinking about putting some blueberries in. Okay, blueberries are great for a couple things. Of course, they're great for the berries that we get off of them. They are very easy to grow. The berries are very nutritious, a lot of antioxidants, they freeze well, they make great pies, but they also make great ornamental plants. A lot of people use the blueberries just as an ornamental, just as a shrub. They let the birds get the berries and they just use them as a shrub because they're so pretty and green in the summertime and in the fall, you, depending on your variety, you either have yellow or, or red stems. So they make a very good ornamental shrub also. Okay, if you do everything right, in other words, you have the right pH, you give them the right amount of fertilizer, the soil is just organic enough, they get enough water, they get enough sunshine, you should get 10 to 12 inches of growth a year. That's quite a bit, but this is if everything is right. And they should produce 10 to 15 pounds of berries. Now we are talking about our northern high bush blueberries. There are some other varieties that I'll talk about a little bit later that are coming that, that we used to not have here 10, 15 years ago. We only had high bush because they can't grow high bush back east. They're not cold, cold tolerant enough. So they grew low bush or half highs, which don't produce as many berries. We are very lucky that we can grow our northern high bush berries here. Okay, it's really important before you plant to get your soil pH tested. How many of you had soil tested specifically for your blueberries today? Good, good. Okay, the reason it's important is blueberries really need a low pH, 4.5 to 5.5. Our rain that we have does add, make our soil a little bit more acidic than some areas, but sometimes we end up amending the soil with lime to raise the pH and then decide to put the blueberries in and find out that the pH is too high. It's hard to lower, lower the pH on your blueberries after you've already put them in. So it's a really good idea to get the soil test done before you put them in. Um, like I said, elemental sulfur is what we add to what we put to lower the pH, but you don't want to do that when you have your berries out there. It's kind of hard to regulate it. If you incorporate Douglas fir sawdust into the soil, the sawdust is acidic and it will help lower the pH a little bit. One thing it will do, especially if you're using fresh sawdust, it will take nutrients out of the soil, the, the nitrogen. It will use up that nitrogen, so you may have to fertilize them a little bit more. Raised beds or putting them up on mounds help because blueberries have very shallow root systems. A lot of the roots are really close to the surface. So mounding them up and having them in a nice fluffy area really is helpful to them. Okay, blueberries are self-fruitful. You only need one blueberry plant to get blueberries. But if you have them cross-pollinate with another variety, you will get more blueberries and they will be larger blueberries. So if you're going out there and you're saying, I'm gonna buy maybe two or three blueberries, you don't wanna get all the same variety. You, maybe you might wanna get two of your favorite variety and one of your second favorite variety, just to give a little bit of cross-pollination. Mulch is very important for blueberries. 
because mulch does many, many things. And what we tell you is to use fir sawdust. Most of you, if you've seen the fields of commercial blueberries, you'll see that they have sawdust on them. Sawdust is nice and light and fluffy. It's easy to, to fluff up around the bush. It also adds, like I said, it will add, we will lower the pH a little bit as it works down into the soil. Um, we don't recommend that you use compost or manure because they are not only high in pH, which we don't want, but they're also high in salt, can be very high in salt. And blueberries are one plant that really doesn't, can't take salt content very well. So we don't recommend that you put compost. Some people have told me, well, I've, I've done it and I don't have any problem, and that's good. I say, well, good for you. We hope it stays that way. But if you are using compost and you find that your blueberries are just getting a little, not looking quite so well as they should be, that might be one of the factors. You might think about taking that, that compost off and putting either fir sawdust or some fir bark on there. Since the roots are so shallow, having mulch on, around your plant will keep the roots cooler in the summertime and keep them warmer in the wintertime. And also, it's nice to, um, in the fall, when the leaves fall off, we want to get rid of any debris. We want to get rid of those leaves because they will bring on more diseases and we want to have healthy plants. So having sawdust there is an easy way to rake up the leaves and move them away from your plant. Usually, OSU recommends when you start that you put, with your brand new plants, you put about two inches of mulch up the trunk, and then every year add two, 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 two more inches until you get to six inches. Now, I know a lot of you have been told, and which is a good thing, that you are not to put mulch around the base of trees and shrubs because it will help, it makes the bark disintegrate. Blueberries are different than that. With blueberries, you can put the mulch a little ways up the trunk. We want new growth to come from underneath. We want that new growth to come from that area. So the lighter and fluffier it is close to the trunk and up the trunk, the, the, the better it is for those blueberries to put new shoots up from the ground. So that's one of those, it's, don't put stuff around your trees and your other shrubs, but for blueberries, go ahead and put the mulch up a little ways up the trunk. It's, we, Blueberries cannot compete. They don't compete well for nutrients. They don't compete well for water. So it's really important that you keep all the weeds and grasses and things away from your blueberry plants. It's hard to do when you've got grass and crabgrass growing up through there. And you'll notice if you take a rake and you try to rake those weeds out of there, you'll be hooking that rake on all the little feather roots that are at the top. So it's really important to try to hand pull those weeds, but mulching will help with that. You'll have less weeds if you mulch around your plants. Okay, the other thing blueberries need is a lot of water. People ask me, my blueberry is not doing so well, what's wrong with it? Well, I say, okay, does it have the right pH? Have you fertilized it enough? Did you water it enough? And is it in the sunshine? Those things are very important. People don't realize how much water a blueberry plant takes. If it's a young guy and you just put it in the ground, maybe an inch a week, and we're talking when we're not getting our rains. And if it's a mature plant, you may need anywhere from an inch and a half to three inches of water a week in the hot of the summertime. One thing people forget to do is when you've got your blueberries and you've already eaten them and there's no more blueberries on the bush, people have a tendency to forget about their bushes. And that is the time that they're setting their berry buds for next year. So it's really important that you keep watering those plants until we get our really heavy fall rains, which might be October, might not be till November. Because if you don't keep water on though, you're just making, you're not encouraging more buds, more berries for the next year. So don't forget that watering. Um, of course, it is better to water from the base if it's possible. Some people don't have that and they have to overhead water. Blueberries, do will get some diseases. A lot of plants get diseases from overhead watering. It just seems to be the right, you know, the right environment for diseases to come. Blueberries aren't quite so bad, not like your tomatoes would be. So if you need to water with a sprinkler or something like that, it's not quite as important with blueberries as it is with some of your other crops. But if possible, watering from the base. One thing you might think about if you are watering with a drip or a soaker hose, really check. Go down there and dig after you th think that they've had enough water. Dig down and see if you've really watered down that 18 inches that it's supposed to be. Okay, 
I don't really need to explain, you don't really need to memorize how much fertilizer and things to use. The handout that you have is, has a little bit of information on it. And I have another handout. OSU has another publication called Growing Blueberries in the Home Garden. It was out with one of the displays and happened to have gone missing, so I don't have it to show to you. But it has specifically how much fertilizer you need to add. But what I wanted you to get out of this was mainly if you're going to use an organic fertilizer, what we want, what the blueberries want, is a fertilizer that has just nitrogen. You don't have to worry about the phosphorus or the potassium. You want mainly just the nitrogen. So if you're going to use an organic fertilizer, blood meal and feather meal have the highest, organ uh, highest nitrogen. So those would be two of the organic ones that would be good to use on your blueberries. If you're just going to use a synthetic ammonium sulfate, which is 2100, so it's just nitrogen, that is what's recommended. The publications from OSU will explain to you how much ammonium sulfate to use, but you can just calculate that out with whatever product that you do use. I want you to notice that this says new plants. Not only do you fertilize the amount of fertilizer that you use when you have a new plant, is different than from an established plant, but the times that you fertilize is also different. For new plants, we would, we would fertilize a little bit in late April, again in early June, and again in late July. But for established plants, you're, not going, you're going to do it in April, first of April, May, and June. You're not, you want to do it any later than the middle of June, because if you do, you're going to encourage a lot of new growth late in the season, which will probably get cold damage. So that's what I mainly wanted you to get out of these two slides was that when your plants are new, you just put them in the ground this year, the times you're going to add fertilizer is different than if your plants have been in the ground for a year or more. You don't add lime to blueberries? You don't add lime to blueberries. Lime increases the pH, and what we want to do in blueberries is lower the pH. Okay. Yes. Okay, the other thing you need to know about fertilizers is that blueberries cannot translocate. That means if you put the fertilizer on one side of the plant, the other side of the plant cannot take up that fertilizer. So you need to fertilize in a circle around the plant. So put your fertilizer in a circle, rake it in really gently, and then water it in. That way all parts of the plant will get that nutrient. Okay, pollination, yes? Okay, she's asking, because uh, I mentioned that they can't compete, and she's wondering if you could underplant with strawberries. That is one thing I get a lot of questions about. People say, oh, I want to put my strawberries under my blueberries. Strawberries need a pH of 6. Blueberries need a pH of 4.5 to 5.5, and they don't compete well for the water. So you don't want to have them underneath your plants. Um, I would say at least 2, 3 feet away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Mason bees, bumblebees, and honeybees all pollinate blueberries. And the nice thing about mason bees, I did a talk earlier on mason bees, and we talked about mason bees come out earlier in the season than honeybees do, and they come out when it's cooler. Well, your blueberry plants will be opening up their flowers in April. And sometimes if it's really cold, the honeybees aren't out yet. So the mason bees will be doing a really good job of pollinating your blueberries. So if you uh, want to grow blueberries and you want to grow mason bees, that's a perfect combination. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about pruning. Now the objective of pruning, you want a lot of new strong wood growing up, mainly from the base. Sometimes, depending on your variety you have, some of the new shoots won't come from the base, won't come from the ground, they'll come from an other, another shoot that's already there. But we want to try to encourage that and we want to have kind of a happy medium between new growth and fruit production. And it's sort of an experimental. You'll, we can tell you exactly how to do it, but every plant's different a little bit. So you'll know one year, if you, if you, if you prune really heavy, you'll get a lot of new growth, but you won't get very many berries. And if you don't prune heavy enough, you won't get new growth but you'll get a lot of berries, but the, each year they'll get smaller and smaller. So there's sort of, mm, you sort of a little bit of experiment with that. Okay, so what you want to do is, first of all, with any plant, you want to remove out any dead or diseased or any dying parts. That's what you want to do. Normally, we tell you that we want this blueberry to stay five years old. And your blueberry will live to be 100 if you take care of it but we don't want it to be any older than five or six years old all the time. So that means you're going to constantly take out some of the older canes to encourage the new growth. 
because blueberries grow better on one, two, three, four, and five year old wood. So that's what you want. If you, get it, if you don't prune your blueberries every year and the wood gets older and older and older, you'll get less and less and less berries and less and less uh, growth, new growth too. So you want to cut out one or two of the old unproductive canes if these are mature bushes, but you don't really need to start pruning on your bushes except for the diseased dead parts until they're about five or six years old. So if you've just planted them, just do a little bit of maintenance pruning for right now and wait until a few more years before you do any heavy pruning on them. And you'll notice on your blueberries that you'll see a lot of the, the unproductive wood is, is twiggy, it's at the top and it's little tiny pieces. We cut that out. The longer the stem, the better the blueberries are. So when you're looking at your blueberry bush and you see a whole bunch of little stems, you see little ones that have berry buds. Remember, the berry buds are on the tip. And then you see longer ones that have berry buds. Those are the ones you want to save. And the little twiggy parts are the ones you want to get rid of. All right? And of course, you want to try to thin it out a little bit. We want air circulation and we want light to be able to get into all parts of that plant. Okay, high pH causes the most problem in blueberries. And it causes a lot of iron deficiency. Iron can only be taken up through the plant if it's in water. Most nutrients, they have to have water to take it up. Well, if you ever want look at a fertilizer chart, you will notice that when the pH gets really high, your iron, iron that's available to that plant gets really, really small. So that means the higher your pH, the less iron that plant is able to take up. So that's why we tell you that having the pH low is very, very important. A few disease problems you may run into with your blueberry plants. Mummy berry is one that everybody will probably see sometime in their life. And what it is when the berries just start to ripen, they start to turn kind of red, and then they fall off. And when they fall off in the ground, they, they kind of mummify. They turn into these little white mummy looking objects. And the fungus is inside of there. And what happens is next April, right about when your flowers are ready to open, or when your flowers are open up, that fungus that's inside that little mummy down there will release its spores and it will come and reinfect your berries again. But there's two very easy cultural ways to take care of that, and that is if you're going to put mulch on your blueberries, do it in March. That way you're smothering any mummies that happen to be on the ground. Or take a rake and very carefully rake up around your blueberries a couple times during the month of March. That way you're going to release those spores early before the flower buds are open and then the spores won't have anything to infect. Really easy way to take care of that. There's a couple other things. There's a couple of viruses that you may come across. They both start out the same. Every berry and every leaf drops off of your plant. Blueberry shock, the plant will return. It will grow back that same summer. It will grow leaves. Blueberry scorch is just like its name, scorch. It turns black and it's dead, and that one you need to remove. Botrytis is something your plants may get. Botrytis is just gray mold. Many of you have had strawberries, have seen some of your strawberries get all moldy. That's called gray mold. That's a botrytis. It's a fungus. Blueberries can get that too depending on our weather. But usually it doesn't infect the whole bush, just a little bit of the tips. And you can cut those parts out. Should you, and nothing will grow there. You, can. you mean the virus? Well, I have an area where I tried to grow all these and I replanted them again, but nothing will grow there. I, I don't know what happened to the berries. Um, she has an area that she's tried to grow blueberries and has trouble growing them there. The first thing you'd probably need to have is a detailed soil test. Mm -hmm. Not just pH, but all the other things, and that, that's a cost. And I can talk to you about that afterwards, how you can get that information to get a, a complete soil test mm -hmm. to find out whether your soil is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. These insects, you may have a few leaf rollers or aphids or scales, but they really don't cause many problems on our blueberries. But the problem you are going to have with your blueberry, how many of you have heard of the spotted wing drosophila? Okay, how many of you have spotted wing drosophila in your blueberries? That hand came up twice. He definitely has it. Um, in 2009, this little bugger started, came to our area. It is a fruit fly. You know how you have fruit flies when you leave your bananas on your counter and the fruit flies come in and they eat it because it's decomposing? Well, these fruit flies are going to start, they are going to lay eggs inside of your berries before they're even ripe. 
and they are a fly. So what they do is they lay an egg inside of the blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, a lot of soft fruits, and then that egg will hatch out into a, what is a fly? A maggot. A maggot. And you will notice when you pick your berries, you'll know if you've had them because they'll be real soft. If you didn't notice, if you're trying to make jam or jelly, you'll notice because as soon as you start boiling that stuff, you'll have the maggots floating on top. It's a very, very bad problem here. And OSU even hired a specialist to see what we could do about this problem. So far, everything they've came up with for homeowners is culturally what we can do, and I'll show you a picture here, is we can make traps for them. Now, when they first decided to, to um, figure out how to get rid of these things. They, they took white cups, clear cups, they put some holes in them, a, a size, this information protecting your garden fruits from the spotted wing drosophila is available to you to download free from our OSU site and it has directions also on how to make these. Since they've done that, they've also experimented with red cups, and they think maybe red cups would work pretty well. The reason this, this, this yellow thing is in there, that's just a sticky trap. And some people like to have a sticky trap so that they can see the insect when it sticks to it. But what you do is you put apple cider vinegar a little ways up on the cup. The holes are at the top, so the little fruit flies smell this vinegar, and they go in the cup and hopefully it will help reduce the population. You'll put several of these, hang them from your blueberry plants, or put them down with your strawberries, or any of the other soft fruits that you think you might have this problem. And you don't need to do it just when the, the fruit is on. You can do it all summer long. I have some of these out in my garden. I started them in November, and they've got some of the spotted wing drosophila flies in them, the even now. Just apple cider vinegar. Yes, that's what you put in. So you can look up this information, but those of you that do have blueberries are, you know, I was hoping that I would make it without having any because we have a lot of uh, tree swallows, a lot of swallows. So I thought, okay, I haven't had a problem yet. I didn't have a problem in the blueberries, but they did come into the blackberries last year. So be aware that they are out there and keep track of your berries. Keep finding out whether, whether you have that problem. If you do, you'll probably want to put out some traps for them. It's a fruit fly. The reason they call it the spotted wing drosophila, here I'll show you again, is because the male has those two spots on the top of his wing. And that's how you can tell the male. The female just has a different type of ovipositor but, than, than the regular fruit fly. They originally came from Japan, they were back east, and then they came west, and now we have the problem. Most people ask me the biggest thing they say is, my blueberries, what can I do about the birds? Well, that's a big problem, of course. The only way to specifically keep your birds out is to build a frame around your blueberry plants. We have a master gardener here that's even listening back in the back, and she has this beautiful framework that she has all of her blueberry plants in. She never has any trouble with the birds, and she's always, she's always able to harvest every one of them that grows. But for those of you that don't want a frame, you'll just have to try, experiment with some other things. Um, blow up devices, have you seen those great big yellow blow up balloons with a big eye on them? I have found that one thing that works really good, they're kind of hard to find, and that is the blow up snakes. They blow up to be about this long and this big around. But I'll give you some information. Don't put them underneath the bush where you think snakes should be. Set them on top of the bush, and when the birds fly over, they see this giant snake and think that, that they're not going to. You could also try anything shiny, CDs work, bird scare tape might work. Put it in, put whatever you try to scare the birds away, put it up before the berries ripen and move your things. Um, if you don't move them around, you'll find birds sitting on top of this owl. So you'll want to move them from place to place just so the birds think that that might be real. Okay, there's a few. You also have a list there, and in that book that I mentioned, there's a list of the different types of cultivars, different varieties of blueberries that we have. Uh, blueberries come in mid-season, early, mid, and late season. And if you wanted to get the earliest, earliest, and the late, latest blueberry you could find, you could be eating blueberries all the way from the end of June to the middle of September. So, and the tags will tell you whether they're early, mid, or late season. 
Now, remember I talked about the, the blueberry plants that they have back east. There, our nurseries a few years ago decided that there was really a market for these smaller blueberry plants because people have smaller landscapes and a lot of people wanted to uh, garden in containers. So you will find a lot of smaller blueberry plants out in your nurseries now. So you'll need to make sure that when you go to purchase a blueberry plant that you know what you're buying. Are you buying a high bush that will give you 15 pounds of berries or are you buying a low bush that will only give you 5 pounds of berries? So think about that. Uh, read some of the articles. Read some of the OSU publications. Find out which blueberry plants you think that you would rather have in your yard. And don't be too anxious to, to, to harvest them as soon as they get blue. They really haven't reached their peak sweetness yet, so you want to wait five or ten days until they get sweeter, and as you're waiting, the birds are going to come in and wipe them out. <laughs> so all I can say is good luck and thanks for coming.